So thanks for joining us. Over the last uh, couple of weeks, I've had a number of conversations with people that seem to indicate to me that the initial novelty of working from home uh, is starting to wear off for a few people. Uh, now, a lot of commentators are uh, arguing about what's going to happen with the lockdown, but I think the one thing for certain is that no one really knows what's happening next. Um, but the, the fact is we may be in this position for a while. So what we wanted to do um, in, this, in this short video was to give you uh, some ideas, uh, some insights into how to make this work for you and for your team, uh, maybe a little bit of re-energizing uh, and, and recognition that, you know, we're all in the same boat and we can pull through this and I hope that you find it useful. So I've pulled together a few of my friends and said, would you sort of come and join me on this video uh, and give us some of your perspectives? One of the things that's become very, very clear through this whole crisis is humans need humans. And um, to acknowledge that and to acknowledge your vulnerability at times and when I say fortunately, a lot of people reached out to me when I was ill, but in, they, they did it um, via social media and texting and one thing or another, which, although it was exhausting to reply to, I appreciated it. But there's no doubt about it. Doing a Zoom call or picking up the phone and hearing somebody's voice, I think is still different to just simply, for me personally, it might not be for everybody, than simply being on a WhatsApp group and texting and messaging that way. So although we might not be able to see people physically in their presence, going back to, I think, maybe Tom's point about just seeing people face to face. But also, I do think that whole thing about speaking on the telephone has been an important thing for me. So Michael's point about how do we manage this is, first of all, just to acknowledge, yeah, it is difficult. You're missing that human connection. You're missing the variety. And uh, some people are aware that in my, in my sumo book, I talk about this thing of, called hippo time. Hippo time is okay, where hippos do in what they wallow. And at times we just need to give ourselves permission to say, I need a little bit of wallow time here. I will be having some ups and downs. And rather than that's, uh, you know, get a grip of myself, just acknowledge it is okay to sometimes not always feel okay. Um, but having said that, if we're not careful, we keep focusing on what we're missing. And I think it's really important to like, manage your mindset and think okay what am i thankful for what am i grateful for right now and what actually has this crisis given me an opportunity to do I think um the three specific things that not everyone seems to be doing is uh, a daily five minute huddle so it's a different thing to a team meeting it's just a very short shot around the six of us what's what's the one thing you want to get done today what's standing in your way right great next and you just start the day kind of on the same page uh, there's another there's another habit if you're not careful a video meeting because has become this big planned onerous hour-long thing and there's times like andy i just need to pick your brains let's jump on it and they've got a name for it some people like a three minute zoom call we, i don't need to ask how your day is i don't know what, what you know, how the kids are we'll do that later i just need so it, it, exactly the same as you'd walk over to somebody's desk if you're in the same room or you pick up the phone to, to take that habit and do it digitally uh, and, and the third one is, um, which put, um, uh, Rob touched on, is about mental health. And just as a whole gamut of things that people need from an organization. Some people <laughs> like Paul with a house full of people. Some people are sat alone. So putting in place different things. So examples around that are having uh, random one-to-ones. In a big organization, you might randomly pair people together and two people that have never naturally speak to each other, bump into each other over, over the coffee machine but on a phone call. Um, doing drinks or bingo or things like that, or just having lunch where just for half an hour you're all sat in a Zoom call, you don't have to talk to each other, you're just at, just sharing a bit of time and just, just, just not being alone. Yeah, I think because everybody is kind of treating it like it's a, a, a weekend, every day is a weekend. And we talked about connection and... Um, Paul, you will probably know about this as well. It's like, um, you know, we look for connection in lots of ways, as in with other people. Okay, but when we haven't got that, where do we get that connection? Through alcohol, through food, through gambling, whatever it is that takes your distraction away. And I think that's one of the areas that we've got to be really careful of, careful of is looking at what we're using now to have connection with, if that makes sense. Um, I think when it comes to recognizing this, it's the three A's. It's acknowledging it, okay? It's accepting it, and then it's adapting it. So you've got to acknowledge what's going on. That's the first step. If you're in denial, 
then you're not going to get anywhere. The next thing is you've got to accept it. Okay, I hands up, I'm eating, I'm drinking more, you know, whatever it is, you know, like, like you did, Tom, it's, it's, it's a tough thing to own up to, you know, cause you're like, what, what am I doing? But just these are unprecedented times. We've just got to do that. And then it's about adapting. So it's making those changes. Um, the big thing for me is having boundaries and morning and evening routines. So great, great question. So I, I you know, I, I've never had an office, so I normally have my laptop uh, and my iPad. And actually when I first came in, I pulled down all the offices and made everything a lot more, uh, open plan uh, working uh, and it, when I worked at home I would work downstairs on the kitchen table which is now the school the school table so my biggest challenge is sort of finding somewhere where I can kind of close the door and and as much as possible minimize my my, my interruptions uh, but I, but I put out a message to my team so I've ordered exactly what you did like a standing uh, chair so I can stand if I want I'm sat on a Swiss ball right now uh, I ordered a, a desk. Uh, I've got an extra monitor. And, and I just put a, this morning, I put a note out to my entire team. And I said, look, by the way, I've just upgraded my entire home office for less than it would cost for one train ticket to Kemble and back. Hmm. So, and, 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 and the, so what is, please go and order and, and invoice us and expense it. Because I see my job as a leader is to create the right environment for success. So that's, you know, that's purpose, that's autonomy and mastery uh, and all the stuff we've talked about that. But I, I agree with all of the things that we've said is that uh, for me, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And therefore, once we've got over that kind of first bit, the mental well-being of my colleagues is paramount. There's no point in us going back and someone's got a bad neck or a bad shoulder. Uh, that's why I'm using the Calm app. That's why I'm doing my Pilates uh, and I'm very cognizant that I want to make sure that I have a good posture because it, it's un, unhealthy. I'm I've had so many health and well-being benefits from being able to remote work. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to help facilitate other people do it, too. And I think um, the skeptics that were out there before that said that it wasn't possible to work from home um, are having to review that because they're having to make it possible to work from home. So we were already seeing an acceleration towards remote working. Um, and I think that this has become a catalyst that's probably accelerated that by about 10 years. So what I would hope to see is more opportunities for remote working or flexible working, which is um, great for health and well-being, but also for people, parents potentially that have, you know, childcare that they need to juggle, that need more flexible um, situations 